CBSN contributor Ryan Chilcote was there for President Putin's remarks and has been in Russia talking to government officials all week. Uh, Ryan, the translation we just heard obviously is from Russian television network RT, which many have said is a propaganda arm of the Russian government. But you were there. You understand Russian. What did you hear in Putin's comments on the U.S. election? Look, uh, the Russian president was, per usual, fired up. He likes to take these hard questions. And this was yet another flat denial that the Kremlin hacked or somehow influenced U.S. US elections. He said there was simply no evidence of that. And, and he really sort of had fun with it. He said at one point that he'd read the U.S. intelligence reports sort of playfully intimating that he may have even read the classified reports, a comment that elicited quite a bit of laughter and applause from the 3,000 odd people I was sitting with in the hall, but that in those reports that he'd read, U.S. intelligence reports, there was no evidence of Russia's role in the hacking, just uh, supposition and conjecture, which he said is simply not enough. And he also said, and I think this is his main point, his main talking point, that in the Kremlin's view, the, the hacking um, that did take place didn't play a material role in the election that Trump uh, won fair and square, and that this is just Trump's opponents trying to deflect blame for their loss uh, and blame Russia uh, for it, when, when really they should just own up to it. And I think, you know, you mentioned that I've been speaking with government officials here all week. That's the view. The view is that Washington has been uh, gripped by anti-Russian hysteria, and they're really quite worried about that because, of course, what they really want, we're hoping to do, is to work with the Trump administration to someday perhaps even get rid of the sanctions or at least uh, see less sanctions in the future. Yeah, but Ryan, here's what I think a lot of people will find really interesting is that, you know, President Putin, as you know, moved away from his previous blanket denials. and But on Thursday, he suggested patriotic-minded, private Russian hackers may have been involved in these cyber attacks and meddle in the election. Uh, yeah. I don't know. People are reading into that, which is sort of like, yeah, we didn't do it, but we kind of know who did. Yeah, I think it's fair to read a little into it. I mean, it you're right, uh, Vlad. It is the first time that he hinted uh, that Russian hackers could have at least theoretically, as he put it, been involved. He said um, patriotically minded hackers could have been involved. He compared hackers to artists, uh, and he said they have free spirits, and there's no reason why they couldn't wake up in the morning and feel that this is their way to make a contribution uh, in the sort of name of Russia to the, the Russian state. Uh, by protecting protecting it uh, from countries that bad, as he put it, bad mouth Russia. So it did sound, if you want to read into it a little bit, like he was kind of rationalizing it. Some may even say justifying it. Um, and he also said that there's no reason why that theoretically couldn't happen when it comes to Germany's elections later in the year. Having said that, he said the Kremlin isn't backing this and, in fact, is fighting it. Uh, President Putin also had a message for U.S. business leaders, Ryan. What did he say? He did. I've been coming to this event for 10 years, and this is the first time I've seen him address U.S. business people. Uh, he went to a Russian-American roundtable discussion, and he made about a 10-minute speech that I was uh, uh, listening to, to a group of uh, American businessmen where he said, look, uh, I appeal to you, and it was definitely the most interesting part of the speech, to, to, to work, you know, use your connections in Washington to help us establish what he called a normal political dialogue between Russia and the United States. And this is, again, Vlad, goes back to the fact that uh, here in Russia, they think that the relationship is now properly dysfunctional and that that is a big issue in all uh, sort of fears of bilateral relations between Russia and the United States, and indeed even globally, that Russia and the United States can't talk without people, you know, wondering if there's some kind of, you know, sort of sinister uh, aspect to the conversations that they take place. Ryan, another uh, bit of, of news that President Putin made here in the United States is at one point he was asked about NATO, uh, and he mentioned that it would be advantageous for Russia if NATO were falling apart. What did you make of that? Yeah, again, you know, it's just the Russian president being playful. He was asked. Oh, if, you think that? Uh, so, it, 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 uh, so I want to ask, Ryan, in, in that yeah. moment, did people take that to mean it was playful, or is that how he really feels in your estimation? Uh, well, I think it's both. So, I mean, he's speaking in front of 3,000 people, most of whom support him. Most of them are Russians in the room that uh, 
you know, Russian business that, you know, really do support the Russian president, you know, maybe a third of them are foreign business people. Um, and, you know, when he said, when he was asked uh, about the last NATO meeting where, of course, um, you know, President Trump insisted um, in, in a quite contentious meeting that the other uh, NATO countries contribute more to NATO and kind of criticize how the, the alliance has been working. And the question was, you know, is that, uh, is it, you know, is that a, a something that you support that kind of criticism that President Trump is, is leveling against uh, you know, the U.S.'s allies in NATO? And he said, well, if it leads to the end of NATO, yes. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that was a joke. But at the same time, of course, Russia does believe that NATO is an existential threat. Russia does believe that NATO should have been disassembled after uh, the Soviet Union collapsed. They believe that NATO was established as an instrument of the United States of U.S. foreign policy uh, during the Cold War. And when the Soviet Union went away, NATO should have gone away. And the only reason Russia believes and Vladimir Putin believes that NATO still exists is to continue to threaten Russia. To, to threaten Russia's interests. Right. And, you know, he's uh, voiced his opposition to the idea of Sweden joining uh, the NATO alliance because it's a little too close to home for uh, President Putin. Uh, Ryan Chilcote, CBSN contributor, as always, my friend, thank you very much. Thank you, Vlad.